Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 4. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and that doesn't mean they introduced each other, and she conceived. So that's exactly what new is. This sets forth this word in the Bible, and it tells you the marriage bed. Nice, clean way of saying it. No man should know any other woman but his wife. No woman shall know any other man but her husband. It's a great, That's a great word that God used there. His wife, and she conceived. I wonder if she remembered back to what God told her in chapter 3 that in your conception is going to be pain and sorrow. I wonder if she, this first pregnancy that ever happened in the Bible recorded. I want to say, oh boy, here we go. Wish I never ate that fruit. And bear came and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Um, she's not too good of a prophetess. Because this man came by God the Creator but he doesn't stand for God now either she's saying that this boy I've gotten is God's and he's totally not she's wrong as a mother or Eve our great 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 grandmother is saying that God makes man and she again bear his brother and some would say they're twins nothing wrong with that either or just again she bears brother Abel and Abel was a keeper of sheep first time sheep shows up should have showed up in 21 in the lamb but here's the first time sheep shows up Abel is going outside the family uh, career Adam is a husbandman of plants Abel is the first shepherd Abel's a type of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not remain a carpenter all his life, all his life, after his adopted father Joseph. There you go. Scripture with scripture, we settle the Bible down. Jesus Christ may not have been the carpenter that people say he was. We don't know what he did. It is not recorded. We know that Joseph was a carpenter. We know Adam was a husbandman. And here are two boys that did not follow the trade. Cain followed the trade, but not Abel. So here's the first keeper of the sheep we show in the Bible. And it's a man that's righteous. A man that's type of God. And Cain was a tiller, thanks to the eating of the fruit that God said, you should be a tiller of the earth. That passes on to Cain hard work. Cain, you're going to sweat. Of the ground. That ground is cursed in 415. The work and the curse found in Cain. And you know what he's going to bring? He's going to bring his work and his curse to God. And expect God to bless it. In the process of time which we don't told. But it's when. It came to pass. That Cain brought of the fruit of the ground. An offering unto the Lord. So, we don't know what God told him. We don't know what Adam and Eve told him. But we know there's a time that these two boys come before God and they know to bring an offering. We don't ever see Adam and Eve ever bring an offering. It's not recorded. So, he brings his fruit. This is his work. He has control of his, I'm going to say, garden. Because that's what the first thing was with the garden. He can say that this is a weed, boom, you're out. 
You are not a healthy tomato plant. You're out. I do, I'm going to transplant you to another spot because that's where I want you. Cain is in control completely of his offering. That orange looks sick. It, it's going to make the oranges bad. Plucks it off and he and takes the good ones. He's complete control. He's weeding. He's removing insects. He's doing everything. And this is a works-based religion that Cain brings to God. God don't receive your works. Even before the law. The Bible sets forth fruit as far as man is what you're doing. And Abel. He also brought of the firstlings of his flock. He brings an animal. He was recorded to be a sheep. Verse 2. He brought his sheep, his lamb. And the fat thereof. Now let's go back to 321. Now unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. And we know by the scripture that's a lamb. Did Cain and Abel have some way of knowing what God expected? Yes, from mom and dad. I guarantee, uh, as you know, as the family talked, the family time, they would go back to what life was before the fall. They would go back to see what God had done for them. And one of those times they should have told their boys was, there was a time that we made our own fig leaves, Cain. And God said, no, take that off. That's self-righteous. Get, get, get that out of here. And God took a lamb before our eyes. If that's the case, we don't know. But he slew that little lamb. And he said, here, put this on. And from that story, Cain and Abel would know exactly what God wanted from him. He wants blood. Now, we don't know if God spoke to him. We don't know if Cain spoke to him. I mean, uh, Adam and Eve. But they do know what to bring. They do know they're supposed to bring it. They didn't bring it to Adam. They didn't bring it to an idol. They brought it to God. And Abel also brought the firstlings of his flock. Firstlings. Firstborn. That's the first time that shows up. Esau did not take too well of the firstborn right. Of the flock, the fat thereof. That's the first time fat shows up. It's brought before God. The nation of Israel in the law are forbidden to eat fat. It belongs to God. God likes fat and God likes salt in his offerings. And we, even as under grace, they say we should remove ourselves from fat and too much salt. And the Lord had respect unto Abel. There's the first time respect. This is God shown respect. Not Abel shown respect to God, but God shown respect. And to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, the, the vegetable stand, he had not respect. And it's kind of funny because we preach at the farmer's market and those people bring those fruits, all that to God saying, look, you know, we gave these fruit to the homeless that we didn't sell or whatever they do. God says, I don't take that. And if somebody brought us fruit for to please God, say, you know, I like, <coughs> I like what you're doing. Here's some fruit. God, see what I did? God say, hey, no. You got to come to me with blood. You got to come with me with the blood of the lamb. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. And Cain was very wroth. Very, that's important. First wroth. And it's Cain angry. And his countenance, that's his facial expression, fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, looks like as soon as this happens, why are thou wroth? Why is thy countenance fallen? God wants him to repent. Just like, Adam, where are you? God knew. God knew why Cain was upset. Because when we get to verse 7. God knew exactly why. If thou doest well, which he didn't, shall thou not be accepted? He wasn't accepted because he didn't do well. You cannot come to God with what you think. God don't care what you think. 
you got to bring the acceptable offering to God. If thou doest not well, which he did, sin lieth at the door. There's sin, Cain. And what's the next event that Cain is going to do? He's going to sin. And unto thee shall be his sin's desire. And thou shalt rule over him. You don't want sin ruling over you. You want to control your sin. You want to be able to most of the time say, no, I don't want that. Now you may give in every once in a while. Satan may slip that sin in your life and, oh man. Or you may say, okay, I, I'll embellish in this sin. I want to, I shouldn't. But, but when you sin just to sin because you don't care. Or you forbid your sin. And you do let it in sometimes. It don't control you, but you do give acceptance. So Cain knows the right away, according to verse 7. He just didn't do it. And Cain, and we don't know how much time has passed. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Maybe it's right after God got done with him. And it came to pass when they were in the field. In the field, the Bible says that this is the type of the world. The field. Matthew, the field is the world, Jesus says in one of his parables. So they're talking. Cain talked with Abel. That Cain rose up. Was he sitting? Lying down? Up against a tree? I don't know. But he had to get up. Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. So you got a religious person with works killing a righteous man with blood. And this is the foundation of all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. This is the foundation of Saul that would be Paul. I'm going to kill those Christians. This is the foundation of Adolf Hitler trying to exterminate all the Jews. This is the foundation of the Jews being persecuted through Ezra and Nehemiah. The religion. Attacking Jesus, who Jesus made those offices of the Pharisees, Sadducees, and called them priests. So you got the first murder in the Bible. Hey, Eve. Hello. Hi, Eve. Get your cell phone, Eve. I know you didn't go. But is the knowledge of evil worth it now? Do you remember giving birth to Cain and Abel and there was no anesthesia? Like God gave Adam before they fell? Was it? Was it worth it, Eve? I got some bad news to tell you, Eve. Sit down. One of your sons is dead. Hold on. Not done. Your other son killed your son. Oh, what's death? You want to know what death is? You're never going to see that boy again until the eternity. You're never going to hold him. Now, tell your husband, go get a shovel and bury him. Satan says, thou shalt be like gods and know good and evil. There you go. There's the evil. Was it good? Was it worth it? And since this murder, how many people have been buried? How many people have been cremated? How many people have been burned? How many people have been given as a dead body to the vultures? That's some of the things they do. How many people have died in this world and are going to die? You are born to die. And slew him. The first murder. And the Lord said unto Cain. Boom. God shows right up. Cain did not offer the proper offering. God shows up. Cain has killed his brother. God has shown up. Where is Abel thy brother? Now do you really think God did? Oh my. Where did Abel. Come on. I'm done playing hide and seek with it. Like your parents did. Let's go. Get no. He wants Cain to repent. And to say what he done. And he said, I know not. There's the first lie in the Bible of man. There it is. And you ask any child who broke the lamp, who stole the cookies, who did this. Well, I don't know. I like, I think it's a family circus. He used to have a cartoon there. Not me. Not me. A little ghost running around. Not me. Not me. Some people say that Cain and Abel were, were just boys when this happened. It could be. Because 
Adam and Eve had the characteristics in Genesis 2 and 3 as children. Now they're grown up. Now they got children and not me. I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Ooh, boy, he's got sarcasm. I hate to say that this is where sarcasm comes from. Ooh, I hate that, but sarcasm's fun. And even Jesus had sarcasm. Paul had sarcasm. But sarcasm comes from Cain. Am I my brother's keeper? And how many people have said that in their lifetime and they don't even know they're quoting out of the Bible, never mind who they're quoting? And I got a note here, go back to 3.11 about that. And he said, God said, what hast thou done? Since you're not going to repent. And men will stand at the, at the great white throne judgment. What would you do? Alright, you won't answer me? The voice of thy brother's blood cries out unto me from the ground. Alright, I'll tell you what you did. You didn't repent, I'll tell you what you did. Adam and Eve, at least they played the blame game, but they did say we did eat. Something like that. Um, what did they say? How did they say it? He says, the woman did, and I did eat. The serpent beguiled me, and I did. They, God got a repentance out of them. That this is what I did. He never got it out of Cain. You will not find Cain in the new heavens, the new earth, or new Jerusalem. And this implies with scripture, with scripture. That when a man is killed, that blood cries out to God for vengeance. We saw it in Revelation when the, the saints that had their heads be they had their were beheaded for the word of God. They're crying out for vengeance, and God's like, "Hold on, wait a little bit. We got some more people who are going to die." And the only way the law says to remedy this blood crying to God is you got to shed the blood of Him that shed it. America's crying out with great blood to God because the people that killed him are sitting in luxury called prisons or correctional or are even out free. And you say, well, how come Cain didn't die because his, his, and the Bible says, you know, if a man sheds man's blood, he shall have his life shed. That law is not here. There is no law about murder right now, so God can't do nothing. God cannot charge and the government cannot charge you with something where there has been no law applied. If there's no speed limit law, you never knew, you never saw a speed limit sign in your life. You can do whatever you want and they can pull you in a traffic court and say, this guy's going 200 miles per hour. So what? There's no law. But now they put a law, a sign on the side of a highway. They put it in a book and say, this highway is 65 miles per hour and you go 66. They can bring you into the courtroom and say, hey, okay, you got to find Cain had no, Abel had no, Adam and Eve had no penalty for murder. And now art thou cursed. The ground is cursed. Cain is cursed. This is the worst God can do to him by not having a law yet. From the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand, murderer. When thou tillest the ground, we saw that in verse 2, that's his job. It shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. That was his offering. God has put this man out of work. He's unemployed now. And whatever he's learned from his father to do as a husbandman, he can't do it no longer. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. And he, you might get something, but you're not going to get the full strength of crops. Your strength is her crops. A fugitive, that's to flee or escape. So he does not get things right with God. He does not try to get things right with God. He doesn't even try to get things right with Adam and his Eve. He flees after this. He escapes. He's an escape. I don't know if you can say convict because there's no law. But yet, shouldn't the right of the heart say what I did was wrong? A vagabond. And let's see, where's that? There's no goal, no purpose in his life no more. You figure there was no law by God. You figure if he would have, God, I, I'm sorry, I got, 
that sin thing you told me about, sin took over. And since there was no law about it, God maybe, we don't know because we, there was no repentance, there was no getting right. He fled. He has no purpose. You don't know what God would have done to Cain to get things right. But he runs. He's a fugitive on the run. So you see movies and television programs about fugitives. It comes from Cain. Cain said unto the Lord, My, my, me, me, my, me, oh God. My, Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. He's complaining and he's saying, God, you are so cruel to me. Your brother has no more life. Your mom and dad are completely upset at you right now. And what I've done for you, I, you still got life. You're still living, boy. And what I've done to you is I said you can't produce fruit no more. What are you complaining about? It's your own fault. And I've been in the prison ministry many years, and they'll sit there at, that, at the other side of that table, and they'll talk to you, and they'll say, everybody's fault. Wait, wait a minute. And I don't ask them what their crimes are, but I've dealt with murderers before. And they'll blame everybody but themselves. I say, listen, somebody right now is lacking because whatever you've done to be in here, whether you stole, whether you have drugs, whether you have whatever you've done, somebody is hurt by what you've done. And you're crying, woe is me. And the law says what you've done is against the law. And then they'll say, oh, I did nothing wrong. And it's like, yeah, right. Behold. Thou has driven me out this day from the face of the earth. This is this is Cain talking to God. I'm going to run away. It's going to be your fault. See, the blame has not stopped. I'm taking off God as soon as you're done with me. And it's your fault. And from thy face, God's face, shall I be hid. No, not if you repent and it got right. And I shall be a fugitive. Just what God told me he was going to be. And a vagabond. So see, it is his own words. I'm going to flee and I'm getting out of here. That's Cain's own words. In the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone. Uh oh. Everyone. There's been more children by Adam and Eve by now. There he is. There they are. We know Cain and Abel are not the only children that Adam and Eve had. They had other children, but they're just not mentioned. Everyone that finds me shall slay me. Why? Because God now has put the law. Anybody that kills a man, now you should be slain. But because there was no law during Cain, what we're going to read next is God has to protect them. Because listen, there was no word, there was no law what Cain did. You can't do nothing. But now, anybody that does it, now you're penalized. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever, other people, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever was not found in the Lamb's book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. There are other people besides Cain. Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be on him sevenfold. All right, now, you want to go after Cain? It's in the books. It's, in, it's written down. There's a law. You leave Cain alone. In the books. There it is. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. And there's all kinds of things about this mark. And whether Cain was the first colored man, I don't know. It says mark. There's a mark of 144,000 tribulation. I don't think God made them colored. There's a mark upon the beast and all that. I don't think everybody who's going to follow the beast is going to be colored. I don't know what that mark is. But it would be a mark that would, whatever somebody would see Cain, it would be visible. I don't know. I don't know if it could be on the forehead, because if you grew your bangs, you could maybe, I don't know. So it says a mark, so what is it? It's a mark. There's the first time Mark shows up. And it's a man that has done a crime as murder. Least any, any, there's other people. Finding him should kill him. 
So the news will get out about Kane, and there's no media. There is no television or radio, but both God and Kane has come to the conclusion that this word is going to travel around. And some people are going to act like the hillbillies and they're going to want to take revenge on this murderer. And God says, no. So, and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. So see, there's the fugitive. And dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. He goes west to east. That's the wrong direction in the Bible. The Bible's direction is east to west. And Cain knew his wife. Oh, boy. Where did Cain get his wife? From his father-in-law. It could have been Adam. It could have been any of the others that were born and had children. And she conceived. And bare Enoch. And there's two Enochs in the Bible. And he built a city. This is the first city. And then he's built by a religious murderer. Cities have a bad condemnation because look where the foundation is. Cain. And called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And some say that Enoch means intelligent. <laughs> These names, you can find all different names. You look at the, the, the books. And unto Enoch was born Irad. And Irad begat Magio. And Magio begat Mesuthi. Why didn't they start naming Sam, John, Joe? Why don't we got to start right off the beginning with these names to get your wife all tongue dry trying to call, call the children into the house? And Mesuthio begat Lemek. And Lemek took unto him two wives, your first Mormon. Your first polygamy in the Bible, and it is of Cain. Look where the source are. Go up to a Mormon and say, hey, you got two wives? Do you know who in the Bible had, had two wives? Oh, yeah, King David, King Solomon. Yeah, but the family line of Cain started what you're doing. Can't be good. Look at the source. I mean, would you go to the store and buy milk if you found out that milk came from a, a, a cow that was infected with some disease? No. Cain is infected. He's been marked. The name of the one was Adah, Adah, and the name of the other, Zillah. And Ad, Ada bare Jubal, or Jubal. He was the father of such that dwelt in tents, and such, a, such as have cattle. These are your nomadic. They just wander around, trade, bargain. Their houses are tents. They're, they're not permanent dwelling. Paul was a tent maker. He didn't dwell in a tent, but he made tents with Priscilla and Aqua. It's an interesting thing. So nomadic tribes come from Cain. His brother's name was Jubal. Jubilee. Church Jubilee, and you're taking it from the name of Cain's family. He was a father of such that handled the harp and the organ. Here is the first instance of the Bible in order of music. And it's after a religious man that killed a righteous man in his family line. There it is. The way of Satan. Already the Bible says, I think it's First John or one of the Johns there, that Cain was of that wicked one. Here's his family line. Here's your music. Then go over to Ezekiel 28 and read about these pipes and organs in Satan's body. And do you think in the line of Cain, do you think they're singing music to God, praising God? I doubt it. Not in a city. They're not. And Zilla, she also bare Tubal Cain, the instructor of Every artificer in brass, that's judgment. Here's the first brass in the Bible, and brass in the Bible is judgment. 
And iron. That never has a good condensation in the Bible. Never. Iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. They had that in there. There were daughters born to these children. And the Amite said unto his wives, Adele and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. Now, again, there is so many explanations of what this guy just said to his wife. I killed somebody. That's what he's saying. One man I hurt, one man I killed. Now, some say he's bragging. Some are saying he's explaining. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, seventy and sevenfold. But Lamech is a cold blood murderer after knowing what his great great grandfather has done. But if it is self defense, the Bible and the law is prescribed ease to go through the city of refuge. And way you, you can read it both ways. But move on. Murder is in the line of Cain. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God, she said, she's doing a lot of speaking. She named Cain, or said something about Cain, and she was wrong. Has appointed me, so Seth means appointed, another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Eve knew exactly what happened to Abel and Cain that afternoon. She knew it. It was not hidden. And to Seth, to him also, there was a born a son. And he called his name Enos. So movies made fun of the name Enos. And old hillbilly southern style of programming. If you don't know what I'm talking about, good. If you watch those stupid movies, you know. And began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Since the death of Abel. Get this. With Adam and Eve still on the planet. Then began men to call on the name of the Lord. After Enos was born. Then they started calling on God. Up to now, up to Enos, and you can run it in Genesis chapter 5. No one had called on God. With the music, with the iron, with the brass, with the city, with the, the, the multiple wives. No one called on God unto Enos. That's a remarkable statement. And few that will go the broad way, but many, I mean, few will go through the straight gate and lead us into life, but many will go into the broad way. How many, many of people were there unto Enos? Quite a few. It's almost like eight people in Noah's Ark. Of all the many that were outside and died. That's a remarkable statement. And it's only going to get more interesting. And notice all the first. And we didn't cover all the first. And Enos, they say here, just to give you the note, means mortal. Like I said, you can find different names in different books. All depends. 